Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at an Asper Zombies deck featuring a Return to the Ranks. This is a deck I've featured before in Historic, but now we've made a few modifications to make it legal in Explorer. The main card we've lost in the transition is Undead Augur, which honestly is quite powerful, but we can still make do without it, and we've been able to fill out the deck nicely by playing extra copies of Mire Triton and Lazotep Reaver, which were pretty good in the deck anyways. And then Return to the Ranks is a Sorcery with Convoke, returning X, target creature cards with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and as you can see, every single creature in our deck will meet that requirement, and thanks to Convoke, we can tap a whole bunch of zombies to cast a very big return to the ranks, also potentially helping us pay for the white mana cost by tapping one of our white zombies, so we don't necessarily need two white sources in play to cast return to the ranks, which is quite useful. And then looking at the rest of our deck, some of our key zombies include Champion of the Perished, which will pick up plus one counters whenever a zombie enters a battlefield under our control, which can very quickly get out of hand, especially with some of our zombie token makers like Lazotep Reaver. Then we also have Crib Breaker as the main card draw engine in the deck, can tap three untapped zombies we control to draw a card at the cost of one life, and can also maybe in the late game and discard some lands to generate two two zombie tokens. So the Crib Breaker is also great alongside Lazotep Reaver, so we can already draw a card on turn 2. And then a Stitcher Supplier will help fill the graveyard to set up our return to the ranks, and we're also happy to chum block with it, so it will trigger once again. At 2 mana we can also fill the graveyard with Mire Triton, and a 2-1 Death Touch also good against opposing creature decks. Lazotep Reaver does a mass when it enters, so we typically want to chum block with the zombie army, so when we play the next Lazotep Reaver we get a fresh army token instead of putting additional counters on the existing one. And then our main win condition with return is having a Corpse Knight, and or multiple copies of a Wayward Servant in play, which will drain the opponent when a zombie enters the battlefield under our control. So if we have got enough of these in the graveyard, we can maybe one-hit KO the opponent by casting a big enough return to the ranks and have all those zombies enter the battlefield. But we can also get there with a beat-down plan by maybe growing a champion or pumping our team with a blade-stitched scab, which is the main reason we're splashing blue in this deck. But we can do so pretty easily thanks to the new creature land in a secluded courtyard from Kamigawa. We also have Unclaimed Territory naming Zombie, so these can easily help us fix our mana to splash a scab, could even splash an extra color if we really wanted to. And then we've got kind of the usual suspects in our mana base with Godless Shrine and Watery Grave, which also help with Castle coming into play untapped, an extra mana sink in the late game in case we don't have Crypt Breaker to draw extra cards, a single Plains as our basic of choice in case of Field of Ruin, and Plains is more important than an extra Swamp, because the main way the opponent can mess with our mana is preventing us from casting return to the ranks and then having an extra planes to search up is going to be the best answer there and then a courtyard another fast land and we've got uh, two copies of sanctum as extra white sources to actually cast return to the ranks as our courtyard and territory don't really help in that regard so that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play and our hands has potential especially if we find a return to the ranks We'll have to shock ourselves, and then Castle will also come into play untapped. So, Supplier, probably gonna lead with our Servant, unless we suspect our opponent has removal, in which case we might wanna play Corpse Knight first, since Servant's more valuable. Opponent on blue-red. Alright, so I think we will go for Corpse Knight here, as the opponent can easily have some cheap burn spell here that they're keeping up. But I do want to save Reaver until after we have our other zombies in play to get more advantage out of them. But a Voltage Surge deals with our Knight. Okay, Scab we cannot cast at the moment. Hit for one, and then we can go Servant plus Supplier. Plays around Sensor as well. It's going to be a Consider instead. Alright, so far a couple creatures in the graveyard already. 
and we can cast return if we draw it, so that would be one of our better top decks. It's gonna be a Prismari command, opponent probably on the Gear Hulk creativity deck, and there's a return to the ranks. So now we cannot play a Reaver first, because then we wouldn't have enough white mana. So we can return for X equals 3, get back Double Servant plus Reaver perhaps. It's not bad. Or we can play a Reaver now and then next turn return for the full amount, which might be better. Opponent's got 5 mana, looks like creativity is incoming, so opponent can cheat a gear hole can play, but best they can do is Prismari Command, which is not too devastating. Okay, even found Watery Grave. So how much can we return for now? There's currently 4 zombies in the graveyard, and yeah, we can return for all of them. Opponent only has one mana up, so I don't think we need to be too worried about a spell pierce. And then I can even play a scab first, so that can also tap for Convoke. Otherwise I could have kept it to maybe trigger or zombies afterwards, but this seems good enough. Lots of triggers. Not enough to outright kill the opponent, but we're gonna get very close. So not sure that the opponent's Gear Hulk is gonna be good enough here. Fire Prophecy kills one servant. And from the lists I've seen, the Gear Hulk decks typically don't have any main deck sweepers, otherwise an Anger of the Gods could have been uh, quite effective. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand is promising as we have return, although missing ways to mill more zombies into our graveyard. But even a reaver into scab can beat down pretty hard. And now we've got a mire triton to maybe fill the yard. Crib breaker is also nice. So name zombie, and then next turn I could maybe go crib breaker plus reaver, and then for now play a mire triton. And then once we have a bit more of a board presence, Scab can pump the team. Put on blue-green, not sure if it's a flash deck or a ramp deck. But uh, either way, Crypt Breaker is a card we really want to resolve here. So, in case they have a conditional counter spell, I could go for Crypt Breaker first, keeping up 2 mana. Or we can bait out a counter spell with Scab, which I don't care about too much. But if it does resolve, we can also play Crib Breaker afterwards. Sure. Opponent's gonna make it disappear, and then now we can resolve Crib Breaker. And Crib Breaker is one of the best cards you can have against a counterspell heavy deck, as it can generate a board without needing to cast anything, and can then draw a ton of cards as well. So now we can go Reaver twice, even if they counter the first one and still start drawing with a Crib Breaker. Of course, we don't want to return to the ranks getting countered, so we'll have to time that accordingly. And then now, probably just go for a Supplier. Opponent might flash in a Night Pack Ambusher to start making Wolves, but we can still maybe attack with a Mire Triton. And I'm happy to jump with Stitcher Supplier. Could main phase, tap 3, zombies for Crib Breaker, but I'm also happy just playing this tapped. So Triton attacks. Could also see Memory Deluge to draw. But it's gonna be an ambusher. Okay. So unlikely that the opponent's gonna ever tap out for us to resolve this return, but we can maybe bait out a counterspell with a different zombie and then sneak this past him, thanks to Convoke. No attacks from the Ambusher. And we're just gonna start drawing. So, do we want extra counter or extra drain? Yeah, close call. I guess we'll go for 
Champion into Corpse Knights. Opponent's gonna sabotage. So they probably still have a second counter spell available, is my guess. And then if we tap carefully, we could technically still return to the ranks afterwards by convoking our Corpse Knight, but opponent's gonna make that disappear. That's fine. Trading for counter spells so we can resolve return to the ranks is all we really want. Wolf attacks. Yeah, could trade for Mire Triton, could jump with Stitcher Supplier. Both are fine options. I guess we'll keep our board. Could also jump with the zombie army since we're gonna get a replacement soon anyway. Okay. Put makes a wolf. Wayward Servant, not a bad draw either. So, how do we want to sequence now? Probably Servant still. Don't think it's quite time to pull the trigger on Return to the Ranks. Frilled Mystic comes down. Well, I say that, but now our opponent's pretty much tapped out. And we can return for 4 here. Which is probably good enough. Courtyard comes into play tapped, sadly. So we can get back Servant, Knight, and then probably Scab, and we can grow a large champion or get another Death Touch Triton going. Let's go with champion. That works. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. All according to plan. Thanks to the early Crib Breaker. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And we've got a return. Supplier. Couple Reavers. Yeah, we do need some help over the top. But if we get lucky with Supplier, especially if the opponent attacks into it to mill more zombies, we might be okay. Reaver. Not amazing in multiples, as the amass doesn't really produce additional zombies, just puts more counters on the existing one. But yeah, we've got two zombies already. So we now could also just go for a small return just to get Crib Breaker in play. Opponent on an Asper deck, probably a Grease Fang deck is my guess, with the uh, Shredder to discard Parhelion. So... Probably don't want to return just yet, because... It would only be getting back two creatures. So, do we want to get champion going or do we try mill more with a supplier to set up a bigger return? That's probably better. Alright, that's nice. And then, could attack with the author stitcher supplier, although it does allow me to cast a bigger return next turn. And return for four here is already pretty decent. So maybe we keep it around. Oof, our opponent has a Thoughtseize, so that can take away our return to the ranks. So possible just going for that Crib Breaker would have worked out better, as now we don't have much going on. So yeah, now we pretty much need to find another Crib Breaker or return to the ranks to start taking over before our opponent finds a Grease Fang to kill us. And a second Thoughtseize we don't care about as much. Can take a Reaver, that's fine. Alright, we drew a Crypt Breaker, that's nice. So we can start drawing again, try and hit our land drop. And play probably a Champion. And then we can Crypt Breaker again. Opponent gets to use Shredder, that's fine. Discards another Thoughtseize. And then we're hoping to find another Return soon. And hope the opponent doesn't have a Grease Fang, sadly. We're gonna take out Crypt Breaker here. Well, we drew another, so that's nice. And another Consider. Ledger Shredder gets to connive. So they're digging pretty deep for that Grease Fang, already double Parhelion in Graveyard. Alright. 
Alrighty, so champion into crib breaker looks good. Nowhere close to actually attacking yet. Another Parhelion in the graveyard. And then we can draw main phase again for our land. Which we found. And do I play Reaver? Sure. Alright, no attacks, pass, end of turn we can draw again. But now Parhelion would essentially be a one-hit KO, attacking alongside Ledger Shredder. Another Indulgence, so still no Grease Fang, but they have to be pretty close now. Untap lands, and can't stay away, gets back her Fiend, so still no Grease Fang, okay. We're sweating here, and we need to find our return to the ranks to have a chance here. Another Fatal Push, killing Crib Breaker. Fatal Push kills Crib Breaker again, and Meyer Triton the draw. Okay. Gross Champion, although still not really in a position to attack. So what's my play? I guess just pass. What if I attack with everyone? They eat a 5-5 champion, take 6, 7, 8. I guess an all-out attack might not be bad. We're going wide enough where this could work. A Ledger Shredder, okay, and a Kaito, so no Parhelion this turn. So opponent can make a Ninja, have four blockers, but we'll still have three creatures going through, which is just enough here. Bet you can't catch us. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a close game here. They took our return to the ranks, but we still found a way. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand does not have a Crypt Breaker, nor a return to the ranks. So we're kind of just hoping to draw one at some point. Can fill the graveyard with double supplier. Still feels a little bit too fair of a draw. And all right, I guess we'll keep this. Still not amazing, but uh, might get the job done. Opponent on a green stompy deck. There's a return to the ranks. Okay. And got a lot more exciting now. And against the stompy deck, Supplier is often going to be able to chump and put more stuff in the graveyard. Just got to dodge those big tramplers. And then for now, can play a Servant. Next turn maybe Reaver plus Supplier. And if they spend resources fighting my Servant, that's fine by me. Do we chump already? I guess we can wait one more turn. Maybe chump a Lovestruck Beast instead. Okay, this is untapped. Yeah, we'll stick to the plan of Supplier and Reaver. If I supplier and maybe mill something amazing, it could already be worth it to return. But we're probably going to wait to get more value. Got a champion, corpse knight, crib breaker. Yeah, I think we need to go bigger. Beast and pack leader attack. So do I just jump with both suppliers? So then next turn I can return for... X equals uh, 5, and get a ton of stuff back. Could also try 
like double or triple blocking the pack leader. And I guess that's fine if they don't have any tricks. So maybe double block like so. Jump here. And then we only lose one of our two creatures anyway. That worked. And we milled a lot of goodies. So a return for five might be the play. Aha, uh -huh, opponent splashing red. Ooh, scavenging ooze. Do not want to see that, so let's return while we can. And then get back definitely a Crypt Breaker at least, maybe two. And then we can go maybe a champion to start growing it. And then Servant plus Corpse Knight. Or we can only get back one Crypt Breaker and double champion to take over the board instead. Yeah, if they have a fight spell, I might want a second Crypt Breaker. Either way, X equals 5. And then Servant, Champion, Crypt Breaker. Maybe it's just Champion plus Crypt Breaker here and ignore the Corpse Knight. Sure. So now we have a bit of insurance in case they kill one Crypt Breaker. We've got some large champions to uh, prevent them from attacking. But a Scavenging Ooze is certainly problematic. Pack Leader and Beast Attack. So this can pump up to a 5-3. It's probably still fine if they spend their entire turn pumping to trade for a champion, even though we can easily grow it larger. Maybe I should draw with Crypt Breaker first and see what we're about to draw. Maybe that changes our decision. Like if we drew another return to the ranks, tapping them out so they cannot use Ooze as much would be a reason to block the pack leader. Yeah, I think that's still fine. And then we'll take 5 from Beast. And this also stops their card draw engine for the time being. Scab's not bad. So now we can just turn our team sideways if we'd like. Now Ooze will grow up to a 3-3. So I guess it does still prevent a lot of attacks, but our opponent has seen enough. Too much value from our return. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hands got double return to the ranks, although missing maybe the enablers to fill the graveyard. That being said, I don't think we can turn down double return with the mana to cast it. And champion's not bad. Probably still go for a corpse knight here, and then next turn we can double spell. Up against a feather deck. Yeah, I'm fine with the trade since we have double return. We want to play a grindy game and not try and race. And a plus one counter seems more valuable than draining for one. So I'm happy if the opponent spends some time killing my creatures as opposed to killing me. Supplier's great. And finds a servant. So I can return for two here if I'd like. Get Servant and Corpse Knight back. Does Champion want attack is a question. Pono could easily have a pump spell. But then I guess we just return for three. So it's not the end of the world. Or I could have returned before attacking to put some extra counters on it. And then I will just return for two. Maybe it's worth it to shock myself to keep Supplier back on defense, which is also happy to chump so we can return again. Okay, lots of triggers. So yeah, we're happy to chump with our Stitcher Supplier. And we can maybe just go wide and kill the opponent that way.
Level Homestead Courage. That is a large Virtuoso. If they can give it protection from black, for instance, they could get past our creatures. And yeah, God's Willing will do exactly that. So, it could be in a bit of trouble. As we're going to get hit for 12. But I guess your opponent still thinks they're dead on board. I guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, Crypt Breaker start is always promising, so we'll keep. Might want to keep it until we actually get to activate it right away and start with a Stitcher Supplier here. Plenty of ways to mill, although no return to the ranks and also no white mana in sight to cast it, so... We'll need Crypt Breaker to find lots of action. Well, now we can double Crib Breaker, which is probably the way to go. Put in mind of a Bounce spell, or maybe a Sensor they can cycle. Alright, that's fine. Blue-white, so Control. Having Crib Breaker early is a nice advantage, but... Opponent is eventually going to have a sweeper, so it would have been nicer to keep a Crib Breaker in hand. But then we wouldn't have been able to draw right away. Corpse Knights, probably the play. And then... Can attack with Stitcher Supplier and still draw. Probably fine to shock myself in this matchup. In case of Sensor, we can pay for it. And I could also draw Main Phase. In case we hit another 1-drop we can cast. Alright, point to go to an Absence, killing Corpse Knight. And there's a white source in case we find our return. Reaver's not bad. So we can play Reaver, see if that resolves. Could also play Mire Triton, although then we might be overextending a little bit. But it would allow me to maybe draw one extra time with Crib Breaker, so it sort of replaces itself while filling the graveyard. So that's worth considering, otherwise we can just sacrifice our clue token, draw once, and attack for two, which is also fine. And we still don't have the double white to cast return, otherwise the argument would be force the opponent to tap out for a sweeper and then untap cast return for three, but we would have to draw both a planes and return for that work, so... Seems unlikely. Bonus cycles another sensor, so would have countered a Triton as well. So we'll see a sweeper here most likely. Nope, just a tap land. Now I can just pivot and make a zombie with Crib Breaker instead, if we want to keep up the pressure. Although it could get a little awkward if they kill one of the untapped zombies in response, and then I'm no longer able to tap three untapped zombies to draw. So sacking the token might still be fine. Yeah, I imagine a Sweeper might still be incoming. So I want to find Return, want to find more Crib Breakers. Maybe a Scab to set up a big attack here would have been fine. Now probably just go for Stitcher Supplier. Or do we want a Corpse Knight into Stitcher Supplier and then leave Champion plus couple Tritons left over? And if Supplier dies, it's not a disaster. Lots of Corpse Knights. Put on considering a counter spell, maybe. And it's going to be an Absorb. Okay. Now what? Now probably just go for Supplier and then I think. I think pass with a plan of just drawing two with Crib Breakers. Maybe it's worth it to shock myself to give me the option of making a zombie with Crib Breaker if they don't cast a sweeper. Sure. Because I don't think this like four damage or whatever is going to be worth it compared to making sure we don't run out of cards. Okay, opponent's hanging back. So, yeah, I can make a zombie. One Triton can go. 
and then we can still draw two cards. Got to watch out for Wandering Emperor, perhaps, but we do have double Crypt Breaker, so exiling one is not necessarily going to solve their problem. Double Scab we can cast. So they might have a counterspell for one of them. Let's say both resolve. Do we have lethal? We have seven zombies times three is 21. So you have both scabs resolve our opponents would be dead. Although that seems unlikely to be the case. Could also have a settler wreckage in hand for all we know. Could maybe bait a counterspell with champion. Or we can just chill and set up castle and keep drawing and not play into a settler wreckage. Because our opponent's been pretty adamant about countering cards like Servant and Knight, which can kill them through Settler Wreckage. So maybe we should just play the card draw game. Although Castle's kind of painful here with all these cards in hand. So yeah, close call. Maybe play a Triton, see what we mill. Also currently unable to cast a return if we draw it, since we still don't have a double white or a white zombie in play. So yeah, close call. I think we... Still want to draw at least two cards, so two zombies can attack. We'll make it uh, these two. And there's going to be Wandering Emperor, can make a 2-2 two -two to block my 1-1. One -one. And then we have a few options for next turn. but I'll probably draw with Castle first and then draw twice with Crib Breaker. Alright, so Castle is going to cost 4 life. Our opponent's probably jealous of all our card draw. And there's a return. Now we still need a second white source or a white zombie. Still nothing. So what's the play here? Can finish off Wandering Emperor if we'd like. Could commit double scab to set up a big attack, but again, a Seldor Wreckage would be quite devastating. So how about we maybe lead with a champion, see if there's a response. And then, what's next? And then we maybe send Triton, Zombie, and Reaver at Emperor. Or maybe replace Reaver with Supplier, which I'm happier if it dies. Okay, Pono lets Wandering Emperor go. And then I think we just pass. I guess the upside of a saddle is it would give us the second white source to cast return to the ranks in the first place. An absence on our champion, so they must not have a sweeper then. That's fine. Opponent does not attack. We can make a zombie discarding land. I think we're done with Castle for now. And we'll just draw with Crib Breaker and the Clue Token. Now we also potentially have to watch out for a Shark Typhoon killing us, so... There's a lot to consider. Aha, Sublime Epiphany. Bouncer Zombie, copy the Knight. And counter the ability as well. Sure. So now our opponent's tapped out, so... It's go time can make another zombie, or we can draw first with a token, see if we find a second white source to set up return, which might just one-hit KO the opponent. So, let's see, we've got double corpse knight and servant. Yeah, I think this should be plenty. So no more need to draw, but might as well. Discard like a scab. And, uh, sure, we'll draw one more. All right, it's party time. Play Servants. Play Reaver. 
essentially pays for itself to set up Convoke. And a scab, because why not? And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zombies in the graveyard. So let's get all of them back. All right, so our patience paid off here, I think. Not running return into a counter spell, not playing into a Selder Wreckage. Just slowly drawing with our Crib Breaker until we could set up 50 triggers on the stack. And there we go, very satisfying end here. So yeah, good to see our Asper Zombies deck in action. It is a deck that relies pretty heavily on a few key cards, being Crib Breaker and Return to the Ranks. The loss of Undead Augur compared to the Historic version is a significant one, so I don't think this deck is necessarily all that competitive. Also, the way the metagame is set up at the moment, the Angel Life Gain deck is quite popular, and our Zombie deck has a very bad matchup against it for several reasons. We cannot chum block the Flying Angels, they can easily out Life Gain or Life Drain effects, so that's just a nightmare matchup, and even decks like Monorets with cards like Ember Cleave that can just trample over, or uh, even a Mano exiling our creatures if they get in combat can also make our return a lot worse. So not necessarily the best position deck at the moment, but a ton of fun once it goes off. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.